the first one of two Vandas I would like to see again blooming next year. But not if this continues. Thank you everybody for joining me. But here's my Vanda Denisoniana Dark Chocolate Star. I think it has something of Merelii on it because I saw a video of Todd's Tropicals and in that video he showed a Vanda on one of his nursery tours and I'm like, that is my bloom. I went to compare it and it is super similar if not the same and the fragrances match. But anyway, I digress. I need to address this Vanda now. Can you see how stressed it is? How dehydrated the leaves are? Yes, it was always a droopy Vanda. The leaves never stood out. There, that's not the kind of Vanda it is. It always looked like a bit of a rib cage, like on a Halloween costume kind of thing. <laughs> it reminds me. It has a fantastic root system, but it's too big. When I got this Vanda, it was up to here. This root then grew in my care. So the bottom leaves had actually already fallen off last year, I believe also during the summer. And now it is super stressed. It has given four spikes this year, which was absolutely amazing. And I'd like to see them again. And I believe that as soon as an orchid gets a bit too big for the normal care that you can give it, I have upped the ante this year and this Vanda soaks overnight in the tub and my lavender mist, which we will address afterwards, soaks four to five hours before I go to bed in, in the bucket. So they have a lot more water. They stay in there almost permanently. I do not leave them in the sun anymore either. And I'm still getting a Vanda that is super stressed. And I'm guessing it's due to size. I'm going to cut her and I'm going to cut her. Let me walk around. I'm going to cut her up to here. That'll be my cut, which gives me three long roots to work with. This one is new this year. So one, two, three, actually, and four. I can work with that. And then I hope to be able to revive her. She came to me when she was where I have to say, where are my sunburn marks? She came to me when she was this high. So you can see that in the three years from the bottom of the stem, she has doubled in size and has a lot of different requirements. Now she's too big to sustain herself. I'm going to take care of that and we're going to do a cut. I'm going to put you on a tripod and see if I can film this. So I am a bit apprehensive about this and that's why I probably started to babble very quickly right off the bat, trying to talk and assess and look at the same time. I apologize. But to be honest, I am apprehensive about this because I don't want to lose my Vanda. But if I don't do anything, you can see by the state of the leaves, I will lose her. So something has to be done, C or C. So if I didn't give you a proper intro and a warm welcome, I do profoundly apologize. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much for being here and putting up with me. The last time I chopped the Vanda in half, oh, many, many decades ago from a tree. But that's a different growing environment altogether, a tree, as opposed to what we're trying to, well, what I'm trying to do here. And it is now mid-August, and I can see she's struggling, and there's no point in continuing. No point. Let me see. Do I need the pliers? No, I can just unwrap this. I made my own little Vanda thing, support little... Thing there. I'll show you when she's off. You see what's going what I need to do, my plan actually is, <laughs> maybe I should tell you my plan. My head is going a hundred miles an hour. Um, I want to cut her and again the next hour, hour and a half, take advantage of the fact that the cinnamon will dry the cut and then I'm going to lay her overnight into the tub. 
just lie her all the way down. None of this roots thing going on. All of it is going inside. Let me see. All right. Come on, baby. We'll take care of you right now. I'm going to go a little bit lower as I intended in order to accommodate any kind of dieback on the stem. That's about right. Confidence and cut. There we go. Now the hanger should just release my orchid, well, the bottom part of it. Let's have a look at the rhizome if that's the problem. Now she looks the way, well, <laughs> now she actually looks the size as when she arrived. So let's have a look at the rhizome and see if there's a problem. Nope. The rhizome looks fine. Nothing wrong in there. Looks like a bit of a dressmaker's made a mess, doesn't it? So please forgive me, but I am not going to keep the lower half. My issue is, oh, it's so sad. I don't know. I feel so bad throwing something that's green away. I think she is trying to grow a cakey right here. When an orchid is stressed, they will do what they have to to survive. But uh, yeah, forgive me, everybody. I am not going to keep the lower half. Space in winter is for me a big issue. So I know that it's not what I normally support. It's a real shame. You can also see that from the heat and then yes, I did have some fertilizer burn because I sprayed her with fertilizer instead of RO water. And then suddenly a very, very hot wind came up and boom, knocked out my root tips. But there is potential, we have more. So I'm really, really sealing that cut with cinnamon. There we go. And I hope that I can see her blooms again next year. I mean, four spikes back to back. It was astounding. Absolutely astounding. Alrighty. I'm going to let her hang out to dry. <laughs> that doesn't sound too good either, does it? I'm letting you hang out to dry. Oh, my little baby. Sorry. But let's make sure we get you back on performance. And let me get lavender mist and show you what's going on there. But first, best practice, always, always spray your tools. So I'll just do that on camera and let it evaporate while I get lavender mist, who is at the moment soaking. Lavender mist. Yeah. How far back do I go to show the whole size of this Vanda? It doesn't matter. She is huge. Roots going out totally perpendicular to her trunk. And same story, same day, misted her. I've got root tips coming back. Misted her with fertilized water and bam, hot wind. But you see, she's still in bloom. This is her third spike of the year, but she didn't have enough left for to complete the fourth spike. Despite lots and lots of water, leaves are completely stressed. And she is one that actually stands, not bolt, outright bolt, but she does not look like this. This is not her at all. So we're going to cut her as well. I'm going to take her down to the two largest roots. I'm so tempted now that I'm doing this to take her up to this three stubs, to be honest with you. I'm really tempted. But we can always cut back later. First of all, Give her what she can to assess herself and get hydration for what's left of her. But you know what's going to happen here? I'm keeping the bottom part. She's growing two keikis on the bottom. Are you kidding me? Huh. You know, I thought I can just, okay, chop off, move on. 
but I can't let those cakeys go by the wayside. Somebody might actually enjoy lavender mist down the line. I am going to save the bottom half as best as I can. There is also some new root production coming here and we'll have a look. So lavender mist, as pretty as you are, and that's why we're doing what you're doing. But that spike is also coming off into a vase. Oh, just one little thing. You notice how floppy her blooms are. That is not because she's dehydrated. That is heat stress. These have not been out long. Two days ago, we had a very hot wind and since then, the blooms have never recovered. They just flopped. So yeah, it's coming off. Now this could be a little bit more complicated simply because I'm going to have to lay the top piece down. Just one moment. Let's do the easy part first. Take off her spike. Taking it far down as possible. Pretty. No fragrance. Super, super pretty though. And I would like to see her again. Doing well. These are going into a vase straight away. I will do the cinnamon for the spike when I do the cinnamon for the stem. Okay, let's go. Let's go, let's go. She is more tied up to the rig than the other one was. But I don't need my pliers, I don't think. I can just unhook that. one which includes the tag and then we have one on top and one on the bottom all right let's you see the little basket is attached to the wire when I cut her the top is just going to be a loose piece okay think 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 through Think, think, think through. I'll have to make a new hanger for her. For this piece. Or for the smaller piece. Work the water, try the water culture on the smaller piece to get her going nicely. The options, the options we have with orchids, hey? But with all my other orchids that you've seen so far in my videos, when they're getting too big, maybe the current care is not adequate enough and then changes have to be addressed. Okay, she's off and loose. Let's make a cut. Let's have a look. Oh my goodness. I hope I know what I'm doing. I think I know what I'm doing, but still. Oh, but so gorgeous. Look at this pristine, pristine rhizome. Look at that. Oh, I like it. No sign of anything. So it's not that. And I believe I'm doing the right thing with her. When the size of the orchid does not accommodate a healthy and thriving growing habit, Either the orchid is not for me, or I have to address improving what the orchid can do for me with a different aspect of growing and being, being also chopping her off. It's that or losing her completely because all the signs are there. All right, let's get that stem nice and saturated. Once upon a time, I used to be able to soak these two vandas that we've just cut at the same time in the tub. Not anymore. And that says something. So now maybe I can do that again. I'm off camera just putting alcohol onto my clippers again. And then we shall see what we're going to do about the part on the bottom. The beginning is always the toughest. 
doing it. Once now it's done, I feel a lot better. But I think I was there was a lot of gibberish going on in the beginning, wasn't there? A lot of gibberish. For tonight, this panda is going to just be on that hanger. I will soak her for sure. That's where she's going to go straight away into the tub as is. Because I, I'm not risking the cinnamon cut. So this can soak away until the other ones are dry enough. And then I can take care of the other one, put them into the tub overnight. I'm just trying to mist away the cinnamon I spilt on the roots. There we go. So cut number one is up here. I'm just going to mist it while it hangs out until it can get lowered into the tub. And cut number two is now all on her own. And tomorrow I shall assess what I'm going to do with the little one. I'll take you along. I'll put it into one of the bits and bobs and surprises. And then make a new hanger for lavender mist. So yes, this looks a bit radical. Trust me. I'm not entirely sure. I feel better about it though. I feel it gives them a chance. So I appreciate you watching if you made it this far. And I hope I did the right thing. But we will follow this. Whether it turns out well or it doesn't. I think it's going to be okay. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching everybody. I really appreciate having you here. Really, really do. I'll see you in the next video, I hope. Until then, take care. Stay safe. Bye.